You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Hello, everybody, and good morning. This is Margie Taylor. We are on Conroe Culture News, Lone Star Community Radio, FM 104.5, 106.1, downtown Conroe, Lone Star Community Radio, once again. And this is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic. So our guest today will be Rita Wild. She's the executive director of Children's Books on Wheels. Accompanying her is Roger Gertz, and he is a special honoree that we will tell you more about. And then we will have Vivian K... Kayla and Don Candy with MCABW. They are celebrating their 14th year anniversary in Montgomery County. Woohoo! Woo-hoo. Wow. So we're going to wow. hear all about that. What is MCABW, their fundraisers, their anniversary party, and so on. So a first few little updates about some things. So this Saturday, August 24th, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in downtown Conroe, and I just want to mention it. They're all the same night. Some of them are the same time. Some of them are kind of first or second or whatever. So there is something called Stingray Anthony Jukebox Rock and Roll Show. And that starts at 4 o'clock on the Crichton Theater. Just two hops over, if you can hop, (laughs) just by the Crichton over there. And he is going to do a tribute to rock and rollers of the 50s and 60s and a high-energy, foot-moving musical review with Fabian Chubby Checker... Richie Valens, Roy Orbison, Rick Nelson, Buddy Holly, Jerry Lee Lewis, all that. So you get tickets at CrichtonTheater.org to go to that. And then when that, that's it for. So, hey, that still leaves you time to do a few other things. So the Sounds of Texas Music Series is having a show, the Yellow Rose Revisited Tour, which features Cody Canada, Jason Bolin, and Mike McClure, and that's at Pacific Yard House. And it's called the Yellow House Revisited after they all lived in Stillwater, Oklahoma in the early days of the Red Dirt music. So Cross Canadian Ragweed 17 was written after a conversation between Cody Canada and Jason Bollard. So that's uh, doors open at 730 with tickets available at friendsofconroe.com. And that again is presented by the Sounds of Texas at Pacific Yard House. Also the same night at Red Brick Tavern, just the other corner area, mm-hmm. Chubby Knuckle Choir will be there playing at the Red Brick Tavern on stage. And they were founded in 2009 from Bastrop, Texas. And uh, their band consists of Perry Lowe, Rory Smith, Cody, Justin King, and Bill Stevens. They are kind of uh, Americana, rhythm and blues, acid funk, soul music, starts at 9.30, but they always have a huge crowd of following of people. And that's the Chubby Knuckle Choir at Red Brick Tavern. And then we have to mention the fourth place, the Corner Pub. They will host Soul Lily, always free at the Corner Pubs. All the music always starts at 9 o'clock. And so that will have a lot of soulful music with lots of energy, funky, bluesy, folk-inspired, country rock ballads. So whatever is your tune, the high-spirited rock and roll, uh, the country western, a little bit of soul, whatever, you can find it because you know we are the music destination in downtown Conroe. Every day of the week, there's live music in downtown Conroe. So with that, we're going to start. Oh, and I almost forgot. Don't forget the Community Assistance Center annual duck race is at Rob Fleming Aquatic Center, 6.30 p.m. 5,000 yellow rubber ducks will float down the Lazy River from the two-story slide. Starts at 6.30. It's free to the public to come in, and they need duck adoptions. $5 a duck. You can get six, a quack pack for 25. You can go to duckrace.com forward slash the woodlands to find out more information or go to cac-mctx.org. So Rita Wiltz is here. She is the executive director of Children's Books on Wheels. Rita, you've been here a lot lately, seems like. And I love it here. <laughs> I love downtown Conroe. And you always have so much going on. I mean, people hear Children's Books on Wheels, and they think, okay, well, she does books. Well, yes, you do. But you do so many different things, and I always miss something. And you're busy almost every day of the week, I think, doing something mission-driven to help the community. And the cool thing is you have an event coming up, which we will talk about, 
And Roger Gertz is sitting over here too, Mr. Reuter Plumbing, and that's no more from what you said, but uh, you're an honoree, you and Natalie and two others that we're going to talk about for, you know, helping you out and donating and being a part, and you wanted to give back to those people that have given back to you. So welcome both of you to the show. Thank you. And, uh, yep, thank you. What did, what did you do this weekend? I'm just, I know you're busy with this different week, projects. This weekend we were busy. You know, we're from the country, so I might as well say that we were busier than a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> okay. <that's> country. <laughs> that is a little bit country, isn't it, Rita? <laughs> yes. So uh, tell us uh, what's going on coming up, like Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend is the Dress White Party. It's a Dress White Linen Party, and we are so excited it is our sixth year. It is a wonderful thing. And people tell me, they say, you know, they have one in Houston. I said, but not like the one we have in Montgomery County. Theirs is outside. I know better it's in than the having heights. an event. Yeah, yeah, it's in the heights, and it's outside, and, you know, I'm a girly girl, so we're having ours inside <laughs> under the air. We got the air floor. We got the dance floor ready. We got live music. We got R&B. We got soul. We got a little Prince coming in. We got Leslie Lugo. Uh, it's going to be wonderful. You'll have a good time. You definitely want to wear your dancing shoes, and it's not formal. So you will have a great time, and it's a BYOB, and they say, what is that? Bring your own boo, bring your own baby, bring your own bottle. You know, at Children's Books on Wheels, you know, we're part of the Alcohol Coalition, so we want to let you know that we don't want you to drink and drive, but we do want you to come to support the event with your adult beverages at an adult occasion. And we just have fun here. We have a lot of fun, and we're looking forward to this year. And uh, we have uh, our couples thing uh, for our honorees this year. So we're just excited to be there at Children's Books on Wheels, providing all the things we do in Montgomery County because we are rural. So we have to take our services out to the community. And being mobile is really what helps us do what we need to do. So we're just excited to have everybody come on and participate. You will have a good time, and you will be calling me next year going, so when are we having that event again? Your parties are always fun. It doesn't matter if it starts with four people, and then suddenly people see it and want to get more involved, and then you have 20 people. People are always laughing, which is great, dancing, and, I mean, just leaving with a fabulous time. So this will be no exception to that. And the really cool thing is that you have four honorees, two couples. Last year you had Constance was your honoree, and that was fun. And I hope she comes again. I hope I hope She's she does. expected to come, yes. And Lorena and the whole gang, yes. all your peoples. <laughs> but now you have your honorees are Eric and Dr. Courtney Banks with Roger and Natalie Gertz. Yes? Yes. Okay, yes, I want to make sure I had that right. <laughs> there you got it. Okay. And you pick them for what they have done, contributing. Um, you know, I, I know that some is financial, but a lot of it is just labor time, volunteer, and other things that both these couples do, correct? Yes. And it's, it's wonderful because I appreciate the fact that the husband and wife works together. That's what my husband That's and I cool. do. That's cool. And we really appreciate that, and we recognize the fact that it takes a team effort. You know, Natalie's doing things with Roger there, and Dr. Banks is doing things with Eric there. So it really helps us a lot. They're all concerned about what we do at Children's Books on Wheels, and it's not all financial. It is coming out to support us, to be a different It's a labor events. of love. It's a labor <laughs> of love. Yes. So a little bit about uh, Eric and Dr. Courtney is that... Uh, uh, Dr. Courtney Banks, she's with Sam Houston, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, so she has helped you with uh, the Camp Noah of recently with all the kids that you had there. And uh, she helps, um, from what I understand, uh, she's a psychologist and a psychiatrist as well. Is that correct? Yes. So she helps with uh, behaviors? Yes. Uh, she was our mental health specialist for our event that we had with the Camp Noah. And she also helped with the team project that we have with the moms and the, uh, the young moms and the girls. And it's really important that you have that unit with the mothers and the daughter effort. And it also is good to have someone like Dr. Banks that can you can bounce off of ideas uh, as far as different things that we have. We work with women that uh, are in shelters and domestic violence. They need help. We work with families that come in to get help with taxes. We have the uh, Alcohol Coalition, and there's also a mental and a behavior aspect behind that. 
And so Dr. Banks bring that to us. And uh, she and Eric, yeah, they're Agus, but Dr. Banks is also uh, <laughs> with Sam Houston State. She's a bear cat. So they bring all that into us, and we appreciate that. Uh, they're loving, they're kind, they're caring, and it really makes a difference with the children. And she just she just had a baby not too long ago, and she was just three running months like old. I, I saw know. that she gave me that today. Yes, little yeah. Miss Sydney. Yes, that's cool. So then you also have Roger and Natalie, and they're very community related. They have their hands in a lot of projects throughout the community, but in particular with children's books on wheels, they've. Uh, they started with turkeys, is that right? Yeah, yes it was. It was, um, I, I can't even tell you why, but uh, we always made a special effort during Thanksgiving and Christmas to uh, ask our employees uh, when we owned Mr. Reuter, did you want a ham, you want a turkey, and we'd buy them. Well, we would always buy extra. And we did it because we had met, or I had met Rita through Natalie, and there's just something special about her. Oh. There's something very special about her program and so I thought, why not? It's, it's not that much to give six, eight, ten turkeys or hams or whatever. Uh, and that's how we got started. And that, we've kept that up for the last few years. So that's one of your, they are awesome. your nonprofit partners that you work with through throughout the year to do different things. And Natalie gave me some information about, you know, donating freezers and professional yeah. clothing <clears throat> attire and just things to help them out as th as time goes on. Well, that's true. I mean, like when uh, Natalie and I first met and then later married uh, and we joined our two households, we had some extra furniture mm. that was left over Yeah. Um, because we kind of wanted to make it our home. Sure. So it was kind of sitting off to the side and we kept thinking, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then finally we go, aha. So we contacted Rita and her husband, Joseph, and they came over and we uh, loaded up a bunch of furniture, just just the four of us. So um, it, I, I understand it went to a very good cause. And yes, uh, it did. So. Yes, it did. And it, and it does. And it means a lot. And when I, uh, you know, pick up donations, we always tend to visit. We're kind of like join at the hip now. And I just love Miss Natalie. And I tell the people of the donation and and what we have available. And there's always a need. It's like it's like a God upon it time. They'll call. And then someone has just called me and said, you know, do you know of, where can we find, is anyone donating to? And it's always just right on time. And it's so special. And, and it's just, uh, you know, it just feels good. You can tell when people just donate just to be no day, donating. But to have the story and why they donate and what they do and how they do it and the way that they do it, it just means a whole lot. And when you have that husband and a wife team that's doing it, just like you and Jeffrey, Marjorie, y'all do that too. And uh, Marjorie and her he doesn't husband always know he's doing it, but yeah, yes. But, yeah. <laughs> he didn't know about the duck race this weekend. <laughs> but that's okay. And that's what you do when you're married. Right. You bring that person in and they support you. And a lot of times, a lot of marriages miss that opportunity to do things together. And this is one of those events where right. we wanted to honor the couples mm -hmm. that uh, help us to do things. And then we have a couple that wanted to remain anonymous that we wanted to honor. And we appreciate them, too. But it just means a lot. We care. You know, they care. And we want them to be more involved. And not only do we just do things in Tamna for the Tamna children, for the after-school outreach programs, but we're all over the county, north, south, east, and west. And we have AT Mobile tag sites, so we have five languages. And anything we do, we do it with love. Uh, we appreciate the people that come in to help us. Our board members are dedicated. Our volunteers are dedicated. Volunteers go through the background uh, checks so that they can come out and help us. And uh, I just can't say enough about I love what I do. It's easy to go to work because I just, I just love what I do. And when I have people that come in to work with us, like Roger and Natalie and Dr. Banks and Eric, it just makes you feel good. And you think about all the confusion in the world, and then you look in little old Tamina, and you see people coming out and caring for us and doing things. You go, that's the way they do it. That's not how we do it in Montgomery County. In Montgomery County, we work together. And 
Collaboration is our first name. We're Children Books on Wheels collaborators, and we collaborate with everybody. We collaborate with organizations that don't collaborate with each other. But it's kind of like my mother said when we were growing up. You may have good friends, and they may not play together, but when you're at my house, everybody plays together. So at Children Books on Wheels, we provide those services. We love it. Montgomery County is diverse. We're very cultural sensitive. And Dr. Banks can go on forever and ever about her cultural sensitivity. But it means a lot. And then we go out to Deerwood and work with Maria Banos. It's just everybody. It takes the effort. We're inside the school districts, not just Conroe, but Splendora, New Caney. We're everywhere. You are everywhere. We're everywhere. And, and so that what people don't realize is that your children's books on wheels, that's where it was founded at. But you are so much more. I mean, like you said, you do the taxes. You're working on um, HIV awareness, the Susan B. Komen breast cancer awareness, uh, domestic violence. You're trying to get young kids to quit drinking through that coalition. It, it should be called Children's Books on Wheels, et cetera, okay. <laughs> or, <laughs> and on and on. On and on. Because, uh, I mean, when you find a, uh, a gap in services, you jump in. You jump all in, and you serve all the different communities wherever you're asked. I mean, you are. On any given day, I have no idea where you're at or how to reach you. I mean, text you. But, I mean, you, are, you could be in Magnolia. You could be out in New Caney at Mission Northeast, which you were, I think, last week. Yes, we uh, um, had Camp Noah out in uh, New Caney also. And a lot of the areas that we go to are areas that people don't provide services to. And I'm like, why not? They need the services. Why can't you go out there? And, you know, and there's really not an answer. But we're mobile. We're at SOS. We're at Crisis Assistance Center. That's right. We're at the YMCA. We're inside the schools. We're inside churches. We're providing tax services. And we're excited. We'll be working with Entergy again this year to provide tax services. We'll have two tax kicks off this year to help families. 2020. 2020. Not this year. Not this year. <laughs> Let's well, just we wait on do, that. We're doing, <laughs> we are doing taxes through October. Okay. So we're the extended service for the IRS. We're the go-to, and people are calling from all over, and they're going, we understand that you're still providing tax services. And this is something that we and you do, do and we love. And we do. And you do. So let's go back to the Dress White Linen Party. That yes. is Saturday, August 31st, Labor Day weekend, correct? Yes, yes. it is. Uh, 730 to 1130 at your multi-purpose, and it truly is multi-purpose, building in Tamina. Um, which is, hey, you have on here, east of the woodlands. So I guess that's what it is. Sleepy Hollow Road. Uh, it's only $35 for tickets. It's only I mean, $35. That's very affordable. It is affordable. And the reason we have east of the woodlands, because when people see Conroe, they think they're coming all the way into Conroe. But they're not. And when I was growing up, Margie, the woodlands was Tamina. Oak Ridge was Tamina. Yeah, Woodlands Shenandoah hasn't been Tamina. here forever. I it know that. It hasn't been here forever. You know, the lake that was right behind the hospital there, I was baptized in that lake, so we have been here forever. My great uncle was the first Negro mail carrier in Montgomery County, and we have a lot of history in mm -hmm. Montgomery County. Uh, you we're do. a part of the Freedman's Town in Tamina, so it's just uh, spreading the word, working with the families, working with the children. And when you start working with the children and you're providing books for them, then you're dealing with their siblings, you're dealing with their parents, and there are a lot of grandparents that are raising their grandchildren. So they're on this, this fixed budget. So then they have to take the kids to the dentist, then they have to take them to the eye doctor, and then they have backpacks and school supplies that they need. And you do all that too. Didn't yes, you do a big do. school project as well? I actually met somebody at the Woodlands um, Chairman's Ball that was sitting at the table that does kids' meals, and she says she's talked to you before. Yes. They do lunch meals. Yes, yes, yes. So we'll talk independently about that again. But let's pull Roger into the conversation, yes. too. So, Roger, what are you looking forward to with this? Do you have a dress white? Do you have a white outfit of some sort? Yeah, well, yeah. I'm sure Natalie does. No, Na Na <laughs> Natalie does. And I, it's just a real quick story. Uh, when I was first approached by Rita and told me about Natalie, uh, I had always thought it was going to be Natalie being honored. I had no clue it was me. But I was trying to get her to understand we have to be here through the 31st. <laughs> without because, telling her? <laughs> yeah, without telling her why. Because we wanted to take a small vacation. And uh, I knew she had a white dress. So then she said, okay, well, then what is it? And I said, well, it's a, white, it's a white event, kind of casual, but no. And so we started talking about what I needed to wear, and she bought me some stuff. So Okay, so you're uh, set. I, I think so. Okay. Um, it, it's pretty close, anyhow. Uh, but 
we're we're really looking forward to it because uh, I've been to the facility that you've talked about. I mm-hmm. think it's right next door to where yes. you uh-huh. and Joseph live. Yeah, uh-huh. yep. Uh, it's really kind of a neat place. Kind of reminds mm-hmm. me of being a back home because I'm a small town country Oklahoma guy and worked on a farm most of my life until I went to college. And so it kind of has that flair. And Rita and her husband kind of have that flair. They make you feel at home. Oh, right? absolutely. Uh, they do. So, so He's a lot quieter than you, though. <laughs> Just well, a little. <laughs> it, I, I think, and this is, this, this is no slam at all, but as you can tell, Rita is extremely emotional and extremely excited about what she does and what she offers. And I think that's part of the draw to me. That, that was something that attracted, to my, attracted me to what she does is because the passion she has is contagious. It is. And she's always positive. She's always smiling. Yeah. And she is, and that's why uh, a couple of weeks ago when uh, we decided and, and I sold the business, I told uh, Natalie, and I've told Rita this, that now that I have a little more time on my hands before I start another business in a, in a couple of months, I want to get more involved. Uh, because of, <laughs> because On the of, radio, he's yeah, saying this. I, I am. <laughs> and, it, and because of what she's involved, <laughs> especially, I think, with the, cri- the kids, the battered women. Yeah. Uh, not many people know this, but my mother, after my dad died, went through a relationship, and mm. she was battered, and mm. I, I saw it. Mm. And that always stuck with me. And, and I always felt that a man needs to treat a woman with respect. Yes. No matter yes. what. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, you have children as well. You mentioned the alcohol situation. Uh, I had a half-brother. And uh, he had a problem with alcohol, and he eventually died. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he was 42 years old, which is just, it's a shame that uh, someone like that would, would have such a short life. And he had so much, uh, uh, he had so much to offer. Mm-hmm. So now that I have the time, uh, that's how I want to get involved mm-hmm. um, and help as much that's as great. I can. That's great. Yeah, she has... Many projects you can plug into. Well, she it's does. It's a wide you know, variety. Natalie, <laughs> Natalie is, is, she's also very contagious because when we met, she was involved in a lot of other organizations, uh, women's groups and yes, charities, she et cetera. Does. She and does. That, uh, that and was, uh, that was very easy for me to drift into, and I latched onto it, and I, I'm, I'm very excited about the future. I really am. No, I think that's wonderful. It's kind of like you shed a layer onto the next chapter. Yes. it's you know Somebody said that the other night at that gala that you and I attended, and uh, somebody said, well, you, you, you've, you've finished a chapter in your life. I said, yes, but I'm not finished writing chapters, so I'm going to write another one. That's right. And, That's how it goes. Uh, yeah, and this organization with Rita is going to be in that chapter. That's great. And Isn't we that love wonderful? that. We appreciate him. We love that. We know the passion that he will bring to us. And the ideas that he will have for us is just amazing. And he's mine and nobody can have him. <laughs> and you have many years of experience in business, Yeah, too. It, it's, again, my mother, uh, our, my dad died when I was seven. So mm-hmm. I was raised by a lot of aunts and uncles and actually my grandfather, who was a, a German farmer, and he was tough. So he taught me a lot of work ethics. And my mother That's taught wonderful. me a lot of, I'm going to call it women ethics mm-hmm. and you, if you have both of those, the country, the hard work, and respecting uh, people, you, uh, I don't know, it's, you come away with that. And I think that's led to a lot of my success. But at the age of 20, I went to work in a fast food industry. I was there for 22, 23 years, uh, made VP of operations at the age of 20, uh, 32. Mm. I oversaw 350 restaurants, and then I became president of a company in Oregon, and that led to another company and led to another one. And each, each move was a president of a company that needed to be turned around. Uh, they were losing money. It was disorganized, chaos. So five of those hmm. positions and then I, everybody kept saying, well, you're great at what you do. Why don't you own your own business? So I woke up one morning and said, okay, boom, done. So That's how it works. And that's right, how it does. That's yes, how it works. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yep. yep. So Good I, for you. I gave notice on June the 23rd and bought my business August 1st of 2003 and sold it August 1st, 2019. Wow. Ready to move on to something else. Yep. It An- totally makes another, sense. Another chapter. That, that's... 
Yeah, I have those thoughts periodically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's wonderful, um, and you can never stop reinventing yourself. There's always a way to help someone. There's always something else for you to do. There's always a purpose for you. You just need to meet those people and see. Okay, aha, that's it. And then you latch on, and then you just turn whatever it is that you're involved in. You just make it better and greater, and uh, uh, it just it just evolves and it helps. I'm going to tell you a quick story about this. So Natalie could no longer keep the secret. He thought he was keeping a secret about Natalie. When Natalie <laughs> texted me and said, you got to tell him. Well, he knew months and months ago that it was Natalie. I know. So my question to them both on several occasions were, do you talk in your sleep? You know, because. <laughs> yes. She told me, she goes, can I, can I tell, can I ask? I said, you know what? I'm just the writer. <laughs> I only know what y'all tell me. <laughs> Talk to the source. So, yeah, and you just found out then. I, I, yeah, I mean, I was sitting in our study at home, and I got a call, and I looked at my phone, and it said, Rita, Rita Wilk. And I said, what? So I answered it. So she said, you're not going to believe this. You haven't known this. Natalie has known this all along, so she told me. And I was like, <laughs> I said, you're not. Do you keep a secret really, really I tell well. people that's I can keep wonderful. a secret. I tell them that all the time. Yeah. Well, she did. It's oh, real. that's great. Yeah. So, I, we're, again, we're looking forward to it. And, and I will add this. You know, I've always felt that behind uh, a good, good man is a great woman. I just happen to have a great woman in front of me. Yes, you do. Thank and, you. Appreciate uh, that. We uh, love you. I, I just, I cannot wait to uh, get involved and be a part. And I hope people. That's that exciting. Are, I hope people that are listening. <laughs> I, I think you just need to take five minutes, fifteen minutes, and look into it because I think you'll be extremely rewarded, mentally and spiritually, to get involved with Rita and her organization. I really do. That's absolutely true. I've known Rita. For a while, <laughs> I think about fourteen years. About fourteen years. Yeah, started with the homeless coalition and yes. Montgomery County Youth Services, and we did projects and events and moved on. And everywhere I went, Rita was still there and involved yeah. in other things. So, yes, yeah, she and we were she in has LMC her, together. We were in the same that, graduating class. How could I LMC, forget? The I best know. Class ever. I, I, 15 is my favorite number, yeah, so of course just it saying. Is. Yeah. So, yes, my <laughs> husband used to be the fire chief of Department 15, too. And, uh, is that too, a lucky number for you? Yeah, 15. And that's my birthday, 15. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it all rolls together. Yeah, like you works. said, coincidences. Yes. Yeah. Things happen. They do. They I'm do not having happen. 15 grandkids. <laughs> I'm not having 15 kids. <laughs> We're done with all that right now. Fifth <laughs> kids, probably grandkids. But anyway, so uh, again, this is the Dress White Linen Party. Yes. And uh, six annual, um, you know, they can get tickets at the door. Tickets at the door. They can pay. We have a square card reader. And it was the same thing for Dr. Banks. Um, she didn't know about it, and her family knew about it. Uh, months and months ahead of time, and she was saying, well, I guess my mom didn't know. I said, your mom was the first one that knew. She says, she kept a secret. I said, I told you, and Eric knew, but Eric Even your didn't PR know. person didn't know. Well, it was, a, I had to, keep, I was trying to bring that, bring that, that, that element of excitement to everybody. Yes, everybody's out. excited. Yes. It's going to be a fabulous party. And uh, you still have sponsorships available? Yes, we do. How does somebody contact you to find out that information about sponsorships? I know they start at 750 and go up. And go up, yes. Uh, So you can contact us. We have a new website. It's childrenbooksonwheels.org. And it also is set up by Damien, and it's called Children Books on Wheels Web Flow. So it has all the information about. Can they just send you a message on Facebook? Sure, Facebook. (laughs) Children's Books on Wheels. Yes. Okay, send a message on Facebook. It would be easy peasy. Children's Books on Wheels. Find it. Go there. You'll see the event posted there. Um, and go in the event and say something because you, you need you need donations. We need donations need for the after school program that we have, the space that's there. Uh, we host that event for the children. It's year round. Uh, we have summer program. We have reading projects. We have camps that we do for kids. Uh, we have a full kitchen, so we donate and cook food to a lot of families. Uh, we work with the homeless coalition. We work with organizations that need feet on the ground to provide services. Uh, and we donate right at 6,000 books a year. 
So we're doing that. They can always time. donate right. books to you yes. as well. Yes, yes. New, used. You always have books with you wherever you go. Yes. For anybody, right? Yes. All it's ages, not all just ages. kids, but anybody. Yes. So uh, please get involved because wherever there's a need, you will find read it. it there is no limit. Um, every day she's into something else that's going on that's important. And then she, like you said, Roger, she drives people into it with yes. her passion yes. and excitement. And, uh, you know, you have a lot of integrity with what you do, too. Um, there, There's no secrets, you know. You'll take anybody who wants to help you, hands on deck, you know, to do whatever needs to be done. So, again, it's always a great party. Dress white. I didn't have anything when I went to this last show. I'm like, I don't even own anything white. But but you were so cute. <laughs> yes, she <you> was. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so We can decorate your scooter. <laughs> I will not make this event. I will be in Oregon oh, okay. visiting my mother. Oh. <laughs> so that, well, that was bland. Anyway, I'm sure you will read more about it uh, in the media because we're going to be sending out an article about this very shortly. Anything else you want to add, Roger Rita? Roger Reader. Roger Rita. Uh, Rita Roger. <laughs> I, I, again, I, anyone listening, I would challenge you, whether it be $10, whether it be $100, $1,000, I, I promise you it'll make you feel good, and I promise you it will do extremely great things for children, for homeless, and for those that really may get a meal a day and at the most. So help us out. Help Rita and her organization out. And what a special thing to honor these people, you know, the two couples, Eric and Dr. Courtney Banks, Roger and Natalie Gertz. Y'all have contributed, and uh, I'm glad you're being honored for what you do. Well, so, they've been volunteering for years and doing things for years, and uh, you have to let people know. You have to say thank you. You know, one of the things my husband says is don't give people flowers while they're dead. They can't smell them. So, you know, no need in standing around a casket crying and going on, well, they did this, they did that. You have to let people know that you appreciate what they do. You take, they're taking their time, they're taking their effort, they're taking their expertise because they care. Not for recognition, they had no idea, but we wanted to make sure that they were honored and say thank you. And we really appreciate what you do. We thank you, Margie. Margie is the best PR in the world. She provides the <laughs> services for us and tell people all about us and what we do. And a lot of that is the fact that we work together before on different projects. Relationship. Relationship. It's all about building that relationship, and it's all about helping Montgomery County. Montgomery County is so rural that you really can't get everywhere you need to be. Our dream one day is to grow up and have a van that says Children Books on Wheels on it, and we're able to go out to get in all the rural areas of Montgomery County. And that's the next step. How can we help? How can we get the families? What can we do? Can we bring things into them? So just thank you for what you do. Thank you for taking your time out today to come in. Uh, Mr. Roger, we really appreciate you doing that. We appreciate Nally. We appreciate Eric and Dr. Banks. And so just thank you so much. It just means so much that I could cry. So thank you for supporting us. You're welcome. Thank okay. you. Okay. So with that, I appreciate you both coming on. And we're going to take a quick break. And this is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic. I'm Margie Taylor. And next up is all about MCABW. We'll be right back. Since 2004, Roger Stein Chiropractic has offered spine and joint manipulation services to residents of Montgomery County and surrounding areas. Conditions treated include lower back pain, migraines, headaches, whiplash, carpal tunnel, neck pain, sciatica, joint pain, sports injuries, herniated discs, and complications from pregnancy. Roger Stein Chiropractic, led by Dr. Stacy Rogers and Dr. Brian McGee, is an integrity verified chiropractic clinic. Call 936 441 9990 for an appointment or visit rogersteinchiropractic.com. That's R O D G E R S S T E I N chiropractic.com. We have the safest food supply in the world. Strict laws and regulations restrict the usage of hormones, antibiotics, and pesticides within our food supply. Production agriculture practices and technologies such as the use of GMOs, which is not any more or less risky than conventional crop production, has allowed American farmers to produce more food on less acres in environmentally sound ways. Find out more online at pathtotheplate.tamu.edu. 
We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make lives better. Hey guys, this is Connor. This is Dick. This is Chris. And we're with the Ticket Stub Podcast every Thursday live at noon on 104.5 and 106.1 FM in the Conroe area. Also, anytime at IRLoneStar.com. You go to IRLoneStar.com backslash TTS. You can find all of our social media. And don't forget, we give away two tickets to the Grand Theater on every show. If you like movies and you like complaining or celebrating anything that has to do with the silver screen, check out the Ticket Stub Podcast and join us every Thursday at noon o'clock on Lone Star Community Radio. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Are you interested in learning more about preparing quick, healthy, and safe meals for your family? Would you like to spend time with others learning tips and tricks, along with practicing and tasting nutritious food? If so, the On the Road to Healthy Living Mobile Cooking School is for you. Call Amy Ressler at Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service at 936 936- 539-7825 to find a class near you or volunteer to host a class. And we are back. I'm Margie Taylor, your host for Conroe Culture News, FM 104.5, 106.1, Lone Star Community Radio in downtown Conroe. So the second half of the show today, we have Dawn Candy, who's never been on here before, and she's going to talk about uh, MCABW. And accompanying her is Vivian Kayla, and uh, she's also an MCABW member, and she's going to talk to us about a couple of different things, too. So what is MCABW? you. Well, we're the Montgomery <laughs> County Association of Business Women. Your mic's not on or something. Try it again. Yeah, don't push those buttons. Just okay. talk. We are um, Montgomery County Association of Business Women, and uh, we're celebrating, the reason we're here, we're celebrating <laughs> our 14th <laughs> anniversary uh, coming up at our luncheon on August the 27th, Conroe's Incredible Pizza. We would love for all of the women that are in business to come out and join us in this celebration. Um, we're so excited to be at Conroe's Incredible Pizza. Hopefully about 100 women will show up and uh, we'll cut some cake and have a great time. We've got tables that are decorated by 14. 14 ladies. 14 of our ladies, Wonderful. yes, to uh, promote their business and the anniversary. It's going to be crowded in there. It will be crowded, yes. Yeah. It's always a good time. How long have you been a member, Don? So um, since this is our 14th anniversary, I have been a member for 13 and a half years. I'm uh, thinking I've been 13 years-ish, too. Yeah, I think I missed the first six months or so and then realized, oh, my gosh, okay, I need to join this organization. <laughs> so. Yeah, and yeah, I actually met Carol, um, not part of MCABW, but part of doing some other things with youth services. Mm-hmm some suicide prevention and things like that since right. I used to work there. And that's well, around when I got yeah, engaged. And Carol and I actually have history of over 20 years knowing each other. Really? Through the Woodlands Chamber of Commerce when oh, she yes, was yes. Diplomat of the Year and she was a team leader back then. And wow. Also, yeah, very long time. Interesting. Yeah, yeah now <laughs> she's a lifetime member. That's right. Forever and ever. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you're part of MCABW forever and ever. It <laughs> like does. you cannot leave. <laughs> well, and we don't want our members to leave. That right. Is, definitely. But um, you probably are talking about leadership. And just, we'll, you know, we're working on succession of that, too, because Carol's looking forward to retirement at some point, And she wants the organization to continue to grow and go. So, you know, we're looking for leaders to come up through our membership. And She's been talking about that for probably five years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. you know, it takes time. <laughs> I know, I, I know. Especially when you birth an organization. Sure. It's so hard to give it up. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, Vivian, um, yes. you're a fairly new member, right? This is my first year. First year. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I didn't realize it I'm was like brand new, brand new. <laughs> uh, so when did you join? In 2018 or 19? 2018. Okay, and you've been 
very invested, even yes, though you're I a new am. member, which yes, we I love. Am. We That's love it when right. new members get involved into leadership and different things. And yes. you just, so there's do, a lot of different programs with MCABW. I mean, yes. you can just go to the networking things, which I have a list of them. There's a lot of yeah. them monthly. Six networking to, events yes. per month. Uh, but there's other programs too, including scholarships, mentoring. Yeah. Um, of course, there's which leadership. Vivian so, is a graduate of yes, our mentoring program. Yes, recent graduate. Graduate of yes. mentoring and this <laughs> lovely lady right here was one of my mentors. So tell me about the mentoring program. Uh, with the mentoring program, what you do when you sign up as a new member, there are different categories that you can go on and say, I want to learn more about finance, or I want to learn more about organization skills, or whatever it is you need. And what the people that have joined, at, uh, that have signed up as mentors, they will do their time freely to talk to you as another member of MCABW. So and there's, you, there's an application process, Margie. Um, I we, remember when we started yeah, that. Yeah, so we asked yes. our, mentor, uh, our mentees to complete that application. There's a $25 fee that actually okay. goes to our uh, foundation for scholarship programs. And so once they complete that application, as Vivian said, they're letting us know what areas they feel weak in, they need assistance with, and that sort of thing. And uh, Diane Thomas, who's our mentoring um, chairperson, she actually reviews all of those and she assigns them to the mentors that they need. And so it's a self-driven program. So after that, our mentees have to reach out to those mentors. That's part of learning leadership mm -hmm. is taking the initiative to do those things. And so it's self-paced as well. Um, Vivian worked through her program very quickly because she was very determined to learn those skills and then get more involved in MCABW. Yeah. What skills did you learn? I learned, um, I've I got brought up to the 21st century with like Facebook and social. <laughs> I, I've been working on it, but but not as much. And of course, with with Dawn, and um, she helped me with prioritizing and and organizing what I needed to do as a business owner. You know, I needed and to figure out marketing, strategic we marketing, mm -hmm. figuring out what my hour was worth and what I needed to do to make that money for that hour. That sounds like a great way, great start for your business. Yes. yes. Has it helped? It has helped. I have increased my revenue. <laughs> so you feel more confident in what you're doing. Yes. It, it gives you a little bit more self-confidence. It mm -hmm. gives you more information. And because you've chosen who you want to mentor you, you know these are your weak points. So the mentors help bring you up to where you need to be, or at least put you on the path to bring you to where you need to be. And I would hope they would also feel that we're still a resource, even though she oh, graduated, yes. you know, if there was ever an issue with any area of concern that she could reach out to any of her mentors and Well, you know, you've we developed continue. deeper relationships yes. with yes. all the ladies too. So you should feel that connection yes. nonetheless. And I'm sure you do because MCABW is a very um, nurturing authentic community. Carol likes to call it our business sorority, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, she does. That's been we her new key it. thing. And that, yes. that's, what's, that's what's lovely about the, I've been with several networking groups, and that's what's lovely about this one. Even if you're not in the mentor program, if you're not a mentor, if I come to another member and they have time, they will usually take 5, 10, 15 minutes of their time to talk to me about what skill they have that I don't have. And, of course, I'd like to think vice versa. If somebody needed to come to me, I would gladly take my time to help them. No, I think that's great. I, how, when did we start the mentoring program? Oh, gosh, it's probably been five years now. I was thinking five years, mm -hmm. something yeah. something like that. Yeah. And it's kind of grown. So now yeah. we have there's like a, a monthly graduates, depending if just, they're available. Just about every month, yes. And I think uh, Diane told us recently we had about six or seven women in the program right now. So it sounds like we could have a graduate, you know, every month until the end of the year at least. So And they get recognized mm -hmm. for, you know, uh, going through the program and um, yeah. learning new skills. And uh, the biggest thing is it helps you in your business, yes. but it helps you overall in feeling self-confident yes. about who you are, whether it's your personal or your professional and, life. And it gives you an even deeper connection with some of your MCABW members. Yeah. Right. 
No, it, it's all good. So 14th anniversary. Uh, let's talk about the scholarship program. That is a, a new, the foundation hasn't been around that long. Yeah. Seven years? Probably seven Close, years. Close? Yep. Something like that? What year is this fundraiser? Well, this is our <laughs> it's the sixth annual I mean, fundraiser, but that okay. doesn't that doesn't mean that's but we did it before that. Correct. We, so yes, so the sixth annual fundraiser that we're talking about is 2020, March 28th, which is a Saturday night. We're very excited about that. Um, mm -hmm. But this is where we get the majority of our funds. It's not the only fundraiser because, as you know, door prizes that we do throughout the month. And I know Vivian's got information about Bid for a Purpose, which is also going to benefit our fundraiser and our scholarships. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you tell them a little bit about that, and then I'll say a little bit more about the okay. fundraiser. This year is our first annual, cross our fingers, uh, Bid for a Purpose. It's going to be an online auction, and what we're doing is we're asking businesses and individuals in the Montgomery County community to donate so that we can have this online auction so that we can raise money for the scholarships for the 2020 scholarships. And what we're doing is it's going to be online, but we're also going to have the products at our October meeting that's going to be at the pizza, Incredible Pizza, and that'll be October 22nd. So you'll be able to bid online, or you can come to the meeting and bid directly on the product. What kind of items are you looking for? We're looking for anything and everything. We're hoping to do mostly products that people can use. Tire rotation, babysitting, dog services. grooming, services, but products as well. Anything that can help you as an individual, a couple, or a family, just make your day-to-day -day life better. Okay, so even entertainment, entertainment as well? Entertainment, yes. Okay, and then what do they need to do if they wanted to donate something? What they need to do is they need to contact me. Uh, they can go on MCABW, the directory, and look up Vivian Kayla or look up Legal Shield. Okay, and who does this go to? Scholarships at MCABW.org. So that goes to our leadership team, um, and we disseminate that information out to the bid for a purpose. And it goes to the right committee. person. Yes. Okay, so that's an easy one yes. to remember as yeah. well. Of course, you can always call Carol Gooch. <laughs> no, you can't. Uh, we're, we're, try we're trying to face our act section. Uh, <laughs> Taking things she off has, her plate. She has final say, but yes, we're, we're trying to take some off of her. Yeah. So anybody, whether you're a member or not, ladies, uh, can all come to all the different monthly things, the party, the anniversary party next Tuesday, not tomorrow, but a week from Tuesday, the 27th, at Incredible Pizza. And um, Dawn, did you want to say anything else about the scholarships? Uh, well, I just want to say we give 12 out each year, uh, which is very significant. Our minimum dollar amount that we do is $1,000 per female student. Uh, and so we encourage you to get involved with MCABW, with our foundation, the fundraiser. Again, it's going to be a great night. It's a Saturday night. You can make it a date night. We don't have a presenting sponsor yet, but it is Saturday, March 28th. We're going to be holding this at the Holiday Inn where Johnny's Italian Steakhouse is in the Woodland Shenandoah area. So we encourage everybody to come out. We do have silent auction. Uh, we may have a little bit of live auction We've got some casino games we're going to play this year. So it should be a great time. We're asking the ladies to bring their husbands, boyfriends, both if they choose to, and just have a good time. Both. <laughs> <laughs> At different times and different outfits. I don't know. Separate the tables, room's big baby. enough. They can be in two separate places. So I know last year was kind of a Hollywood theme, yes. and it was a lot of fun. Yes. I, how many people participated? Uh, we had over 220, I believe, last year. And so we're still asking the ladies, dress up. We want you oh look, yeah look it's fancy fun. and oh yeah absolutely so it was a good time and you were the organizer for that it yes. went off very well i helped carol coordinate this fundraiser each year <laughs> yes <laughs> so and before that was a sock hop i believe yes, that's right so fun. there's the different things it was fun yes yeah. so uh you know why are we announcing this now because people need to put their finances in order to right. help with that and towards the end of the year yes. is easier than at the beginning of the year and uh, so this is in 2020 spring and this like you said it went to 12 different ladies that That's are right. graduating seniors from throughout the county right. there and I don't know it seems like there was close to a hundred 
applications. Yes. yes, we hit very close to 100 on the applications that come through. And these ladies um, are all very grateful. I, I know that Carol said she got letters from all of them and how it really made a significant difference some to their the girls, education. Yeah, some of the girls said they would not have been able to go to college if it wasn't for that scholarship. So. And some are first time yes. in their family yeah. going to college. So uh, that really makes a difference. So if you're looking for something else to get involved in, uh, this would be it. Now, all of the upcoming events are on the mcabw.org, but there's six events six every events. single month. Yeah. So first Wednesday, there's a luncheon at Pizza Shack. I actually wrote it down to remember these yes. things, just so you know, Don. <laughs> I wasn't going to put you on the spot. And then the first Friday is the business coffee in the Woodlands at the Woodlands Chamber. Uh, then there's a monthly mixer the second Thursday. There's something every week. Yes, every week. Every week, because there's something the first week. There's two events the first week. There's something the second week. The third Friday in Conroe at the Conroe Chamber is the business coffee of course, the fourth Tuesday of the month is the big one with all the ladies. Everybody goes to that. The others are smaller little get-togethers. So if you're a little um, new and maybe a little uh, intimidated or apprehensive about meeting all these new people, kind of like going into a new church that you don't know and don't know what right. the norms are, go to one of these smaller things. The coffees are in the morning, like 8.30 in the morning in, you know, Maybe 10 p we ladies or so. Yes, so. they're very topic-driven, yes. something of interest. There's also a luncheon, um, small luncheon at, uh, I did not write that. <laughs> I missed Pizza that. Shack. Oh, monthly, yeah. yeah. Fourth, no, okay. Yeah, it's a Pizza Shack. So if you're talking about the dinner, you might be talking the, about the we yes, do have a dinner. I missed that one. There is that's, one. That's at Eden. That's the fourth Thursday. Yes. Yes, yes the fourth Thursday, and Eden's that's at Cafe. 5.30, I believe. So the Pizza Shack one in Montgomery on 105 is the first Wednesday. Anyway, right. you have to go to the calendar and go <laughs> look at it. Or you can go to Facebook and find out what's happening. But every week there's an event going yeah, on. Pretty much. So you can plug into any of those. But the big one is next Tuesday, the 14th. And the fundraiser is March 28th. We didn't talk about why it was founded. Well, it was founded um, actually 16 years ago. Uh, Carol started contemplating this. But because there were, back then, there weren't any real networking groups for women except for ABWA. There was a chapter of that in the Woodlands. And she so wanted something to be uh, like that, but for Montgomery County and where the money and the funds, everything that it did stayed here in Montgomery County. ABWA is a national organization that she loves and she's still a member of as well. So, um, but she got together with a small group of women and said, you know, what do you think about this? They talked about it and decided let's do it. And she became the founder and executive director and she has been going ever since. And so we have close to 200 women that are members now. And we look to grow that membership because we all get better when we grow, right? Mm -hmm. Because then we make more friends mm -hmm. and more uh, contacts and opportunities for our businesses. So that's why it was founded. And one of the things that's nice about this as well, whether you're from one of the smaller towns in Montgomery County or one of the larger towns in Montgomery County, you're treated the same. You're that's a right. woman with a business walking into MCABW. With respect. With respect. You're right. And, and there's no reason for anybody to be afraid to go to any of no, these meetings because no. there's always somebody there who's going to be very welcoming, especially who's ever running it, even it's, if it's a small dinner yep. or the luncheon or the coffee thing. There's always people that will engage. And, um, and that, that's one of the beautiful things about this as well. Get you connected. Because we have such a variety of times and dates, you should be able to meet at least at one of the meetings. Try one of the small things first, or go with a friend. Yeah. You know, bring a friend with That's you. Right. Bring, bring, bring a guest. You know, yeah. it, you know, contact one of us <laughs> and go. So that's about all the time we have for today. So go to mcabw.org. We'll see you at the luncheon on the 27th next Tuesday. 1130 to 1. 1130 to 1. Incredible pizza. pizza. Yes. So y'all have a great afternoon. I'm Margie Taylor, and this is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic.